hate the way no one speaks to each other in big cities. I don't know if they're just shy or what, but it's so unfriendly. <sighs> I give up. See you, Mum, Dad. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm just at the dentist. Now I'm a celebrity, I really have to look after my image, and everyone knows that the teeth are the window to the soul. I was gonna get my teeth whitened, but they told me you can't have red wine for 24 hours afterwards, and the last time I went that long without any alcohol, I had a seizure. <laughs> I always get very nervous when I come to the dentist, but this one's very sweet, very good looking. I am sleeping with him. At least I think I am. Whenever I wake up from the anaesthetic, my knickers are on the wrong way around. <laughs> the main reason I want to get my teeth done is because I'm on a mission to get a spread in one of these celeb magazines. The money is fantastic. I mean, OK is like the new D-list celebrity welfare state. If you have enough babies, you can make a fortune. <laughs> anyway, I'll be cracking on as soon as he's given me another fill-in. <laughs> so you from around here? in the back. <laughs> Hello, it's 3am. You've been out clubbing tonight and you've taken too many drugs, which is why you're watching Cash Cow. <laughs> We're about to go on to our next game, which is called Deducto. The rules are simple. You give me a letter and if it's part of the word or phrase, it registers on the screen. Then, by a process of skill and elimination, you can deduce the winning answer. Yeah, it's Hangman. <laughs> so let's see who's on line one. Who's there? Kylie. Oh, that's nice. Are you named after Kylie Minogue? <laughs> Who? <laughs> right. Are you ready to play deductor, Kylie? Yeah. <sighs> OK, you've got 20 seconds to guess the phrase and you get £10 for each letter you guess correctly. And I can reveal, tonight we're looking for the name of a band. <laughs> OK, Kylie, you've got 20 seconds starting now. A. No. E. No. I. No. O. No. U. No. O. Uh, T. No. P. No. F. No. Uh, M. No. J. No. <laughs> We're out of time. <laughs> That's the end of the round and you've won. <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> so let's see what the answer is. Look, Kylie, it was Leonard Skinner, the well-known American rock band of the 70s that was so rock and roll they decided to abandon vowels altogether. <laughs> OK, let's go straight to the next game. We're looking for the name of an album released in the last 50 years. <laughs> Good luck. Um, so even though I'm still keen on being a barrister, I'd just like to know what else I could use my degree for. I mean, before I commit to one year pupillage on minimum wage. I know what you mean. Pupillage is all well and good, but is it a guarantee of work at the end of the day? Well, exactly. I mean, I just want to know what's out there, really. Um, civil servant, licence conveyancing, that kind of thing. Hmm. Yeah. Um... Have you thought about banging a footballer? <laughs> what? You know, really giving it to a footballer once or twice. I mean, the pay is very good if you get a premiership one. <laughs> Absolutely not! I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Of course. I mean, looking at you now, I can see you're more championship than Prem. <laughs> what? Actually, I think there's an opening at Norwich at the moment. Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't believe I'm hearing this. It's 300 grand a year. <laughs> Have you got a leaflet on it? <laughs> Just found these, tucked in here. Some gift vouchers I got for my birthday. Give someone a gift voucher, show them how you don't care. They're for a chemist as well, what are they trying to tell me? I must remember to send them a thank you note. 
Thank you for your thoughtful Boots gift voucher. I'm so happy with my athlete's foot powder, pregnancy test and flight socks. I could at least have got me some super drug ones so I'd get more for my money. Selfish bastards. OK, Karen, that's the worst of it over with. That molar at the back has been filled now, so we'll just let that settle for a second. OK. Yeah, and it's nothing to worry about at the moment, but I've just noticed you've got rather swollen and enlarged... What? Fit? Is that even fair? I told you that's it. Hey, when I go back... I don't think that's the truth. It's fair, and I felt that. No! I got a kick, 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 Good evening. Tonight, we look at the war in Iraq and ask why are women not allowed to fight in the front line? Joining me is my friend and catch fight expert, Tiffany Slank, <laughs> who has won 36 of her last 37 scraps outside nightclubs in Exeter. <laughs> Yay, Tiffany, welcome! Thank you. Can I just say you look really hot tonight? Seriously, you do, so please don't hit me or anything. Oh, no way. <laughs> I'd only fight you if you deserved it. You know, like, if you spilled my drink or if you looked hotter than me or something. <laughs> oh, my God. No way do I look hotter than you. I so do. <laughs> only about ten times hotter. <laughs> OK, let's talk about the issue, cos it's really, really serious. Women can be in the army, but not in the gun-shooty fighting bits. <laughs> Why? Whoever is in charge of the army, like the boss or the manager or whatever, <laughs> reckons that women do not have what it takes physically or mentally. Oh, but I've seen you in fights and you're very physical and very, very mental. I know. <laughs> So why do you think the army needs lady soldiers? They're not called lady soldiers, Karen. They're called soldieresses. <laughs> the problem with man soldiers called soldier... So, so what are man soldiers called? I think it's soldiermans. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem with soldiermans is they cannot multitask. And do you know how hot it is in Iraq? Do you mean temperature hot or loads of soldiermen with really good bodies hot? <laughs> temperature hot. Um, I think it's probably really hot. Like about 100. <laughs> it so is, which is why they need soldieresses who can multitask. You need to be able to shoot a gun and put on sunscreen. <laughs> wow, I did not know that. Nobody does. But what about maps? What? Well, I think sometimes you have to read maps in the army and that's, like, really hard. Now, I reckon lady soldiers would probably get lost all the time. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, cos they would just ask for directions. <laughs> if a soldier man gets lost, he just keeps driving and driving. <laughs> and he won't stop and ask anyone. So then he gets so lost that he accidentally ends up driving his tank across the border into North Korea, and then the boss of North Korea sees the tank and thinks there's an invasion happening, and then, uh-oh, World War Three starts. <laughs> How bad is that? Oh, my God. That's really, really bad. <laughs> and it could so easily happen, cos North Korea's right next to Iraq, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think it's all on one big, long axis of evil. Wow. <laughs> Nice use of fact words, Tiffany. Points to you for saying access of evil. That's seriously smart. Do you know what is seriously not smart? <laughs> Touching me, you stupid bitch! <laughs> oh, I am about to rain down a whole lot of evil on your fucking axis. <laughs> right, you heard me. Step up, bitch! <laughs> We investigate the claim that adding hormones to meat products is making women more aggressive. <laughs> Goodbye! And it was during my sabbatical that I realised that these were the people I wanted to help, which is what prompted me to do the Masters. And that was in politics? Yes, uh, global and comparative politics. I combined. Hmm, yeah. Have you thought about banging a footballer? <laughs> Sorry? Really giving it to a footballer. I mean, the pay is very good. Why the hell would anyone... I'm sorry. I... My mistake. 
you're obviously not that way inclined. <laughs> Have you thought about receiving a banging from a footballer? <laughs> Come on, there's three gay in the Premiership alone. They're not going to shag themselves. <laughs> it's 300 grand a year. <laughs> You've got a leaflet on it. We women go through a lot to be beautiful. We wear makeup to make us look five years younger. We have Botox to make us look ten years younger. And we have the hairs ripped out of our vaginas to make us look twelve. What do men do? Most of them don't even wash the cocks. <laughs> Took us to the remote, Karen. <laughs> oh. oh. Welcome to VD TV, where I give you VD. <laughs> That's me, Valerie Denton. Who ate all the pies? Who ate all the pies? You fat bastard! You fat bastard! You ate all the pies! Is that something you hear while you walk down to Netto? Does a word salad mean nothing to you? Do you go to America on holiday to make you feel thin? Have you never managed to go up on a seesaw? <laughs> then you must be a big fat pig. But I'm here to help. There are many diets you can try. There's the Atkins diet, where you eat so much red meat you get bowel cancer, thus making you thin. There's the hay diet, where you eat, well, hay. But I prefer the full English weekend day, where you binge drink till you fall over and have to have your stomach pumped. <laughs> I went for this option whilst holidaying in the Balearics, and it really worked for me. But you don't have to diet. I have come up with a fantastic, new, relatively painless and instant way of shedding pounds. <gasps> Trini and Susanna invented magic pants. I have invented... Magic gaffer tape, patent pending. <laughs> Here we have Jane. As you can see, Jane is a bit of a porker. Grunt for us, Jane. What? Thank you. <laughs> now, there are two methods you can adopt whilst using the magic gaffer tape patent pending. You can either simply encase yourself with the gaffer tape thus creating a more streamlined figure. Or you can go for the second option, as I am doing now, <laughs> and you simply create a new silhouette by blacking it out the old one. <laughs> there we have it. Now you just have to make sure you're always in front of a black background. <laughs> and it'll always look a million dollars, all for only £1.50. <laughs> My God, Jane, you look almost human. You're bound to get a boyfriend now. Actually, I'm married. Well, it doesn't matter if you're fat, then, does it? What a waste of my time. <laughs> Let's get this off you. <laughs> <sighs> Next time, we'll look at home skin grafting. See you then. <laughs> I decided to start my quest for a glossy spread with OK Magazine. And as far as I'm concerned, you really can't beat the direct approach. I just wanted to let you know that Karen Taylor is available for an at-home with Karen Taylor feature. No, she's not pregnant. No, she hasn't just suffered a heartbreaking miscarriage. No, she's not getting scripts in motherhood. No, she's not bouncing back after a bit of divorce. No, she's not going into rehab. She is recovering from a particularly distressing hangover, but she's trying to remain positive and looking forward to the future. No? OK. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. And I let me know. So. Well, that didn't work. But there's more than one way to fuck a pig. So I headed to the one place you'll always find a photographer. Hang on a minute. 
Farrier all my life. I've been clipping horses and turning the old hot iron since I was that high. Problem is, nowadays, there's loads of mobile farriers out there. I'm too old to compete with that, so I've had to close the family business down. Oh, that is bad. Shocking. Well, don't despair just yet, Jerry, because um, as a farrier, you have what we call in the uh, careers business a transferable skill. <laughs> You'd be surprised what's out there for you, actually. Um, I mean, have you thought about banging a footballer? See what? I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I said, have you thought about banging a footballer? <laughs> really giving it to footballer like. Beg your pardon. I mean, when you think about it, it's a lot like farriering, but instead of hammering shoes, you'll be hammering asses. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Go move with the times. It's a different skill set out there nowadays. You look like you've still got some lead in your pencil. 300 grand a year. State pension's not going to go on forever. <laughs> well, it's been a nice night, hasn't it? That trifle was bang on. Yeah, and it's lovely meeting your mum, Kaz. She's great. Ah, oh, thanks, Gaz. I think she's enjoyed staying. I mean, it must be lonely for her home since Dad died. Yeah, and at least it stopped you two going on about lesbianism all the time. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, sorry about that. Now, what have I missed? Oh, we were just saying how nice it is to have you round, Pat. Oh, well, it's nice to see you too, Dave. Maybe you can tell me if I ought to buy a hat soon. <laughs> Mom! Well, if you don't ask her, Dave, she might find another man who will. Uh, hang on a minute, Mum. What makes you think I'd marry another man? I don't need a man. She doesn't need a man, Pat. <laughs> nope. I could just as easily go off with another woman. Women get married all the time nowadays. Two of the women. Mm, it shocks these two. Turns them off. Turns them on some at rotten. <laughs> if you think about it, Pat, two women make sense. Women know what women want, if you catch my drift. <laughs> well, I must say, I'm a little bit shocked. Uh, I would just like to apologise. No, Dave, no need. To be honest, I'm, I'm glad you've grown up to be so open-minded, love. Well, that's just what I am, Mum. Open-minded. Always have been. You must have noticed when I was growing up how into girls I was. You probably thought I was a lesbian sometimes. <laughs> oh, no, dear, no. Right from an early age, you were always getting into trouble for messing around with the boys. And there was that time when Jeanette from down the road came out as gay and you stood outside her house with that cruel sign till she was forced to move away. Do you remember? <laughs> that? But I'm so pleased at how mature you're being about it because... Now, I feel I can open up to you about something wonderful that's happened in my life. Oh, what's up, Pat? I've found love. Have you? Oh. Mm -hmm. Who is he? Oh, not a he, dear. It's a she. Mrs Cooper from the WI. We've become an item. <laughs> Bloody joke. Oh, you're quite right, Jane. Women do know what women want. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, your father was a lovely man, dear, but the earth rarely moved in the bedroom department. <laughs> now it's like going to bed on the San Andreas fault. It's Alzheimer's. Her brain's gone wonky. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I know it's a lot to take in. And, well, I've probably had a bit too much to drink and said more than I should, but... Well, I feel like a huge weight's been lifted from my shoulders. I'm going to bed now. See you in the morning. Shocked. Turned on. I think I'm going to be sick. Hey, don't touch me. Just trying a few last options. Looks like I'm going to have to cave and give them what they want. Hello, is that Africa? Fantastic. Now, how much does it cost for a brown baby? <laughs> yep, just a hurry for the day. Well, how much for a couple of hours? How about giving me a two-for-one deal? 
Right, well, uh, you know, I've got a call in with Cambodia, so if that doesn't work out, I might get back to you. <laughs> Hung up. Bit touchy. You think they need the money? <laughs> I'm so sorry. We tried everything, but there was nothing more we could do. Oh, my God. I can't believe he's dead. Can I see him? Of course. I love you so much. Yeah. You said he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> that never stops being funny. <laughs> I think now, as a woman, I want something different from my life partner. Not the new man with his pompous, empty gestures of sensitivity or the once-revered yuppie with his uncouth brevity and shamelessly overt social climbing. I want a different man, a man with integrity, a man with heart, a man who can build me a wall and fuck me on it. <laughs> You've got a hotline to premenstrual girl. Everyone knows it. I need to see her again. Nigel, I see her maybe once a month. That's it. I think I'm in love with her. What's she really like underneath all the mood swings, the temper and the foul language? That's about it, to be honest. Ah, oh, Penelope, you should have seen her when she saved me from that fire. She pulled me free, then had a moan about her tits being sore. So put my arm round her. She need me in the groin and told me to fuck off. It was amazing. She's, she's such a bitch. I can be bitchy sometimes. I mean, just the other day, someone cut me up at the lights and I muttered flipping heck under my breath. Right. A premenstrual girl doesn't say flipping heck. She says things like, no bastard shitting twat snacks and fucking fuck the lot of you. She sounds great, Nige. Oh, I love her, Penelope. I love her greasy hair, her breakdowns, that slightly strange smell of iron. I, I love her spots, her rage. Most of all, I love her fat bit. Excuse me, Nick Nige. Girl. My God! Who you call him fat? This is water attention, you far eyed bastard. <laughs> oh my God, I killed him! <laughs> the only man who ever tried to love me and I killed him! <laughs> I'm gonna spend the rest of my life alone on this sofa! <laughs> oh. oh, God almighty. Oh, you're alive, thank God. Well, you've got a left arm like Lennox Lewis. So I look like a fucking heavyweight, do I? <laughs> Twat. Has anyone got any Nurofen? I feel like I've been punched in the stomach by Abu Hamza. <laughs> well, I'm going to make one last attempt to get some press attention. I'm going out on the piss. I'm going to try and pull someone really famous. Double the fame, double the draw. And if that doesn't work, well, at least I'll be drunk. I should do all right, though, because I'm not that fussy. I once went out with someone who's 68. People said he was too old for me, but uh, he treated me like no other man ever did. When he went down on me, he would take his teeth out and chew my nipple at the same time. Fantastic. <laughs> Can't have these. That was awesome. Fantastic. Hilarious. Yeah, I loved it. People with jaundice are so funny. <laughs> Right, 6J. Well, as we just learned in assembly, it's almost time for work experience again. And I'm sure you lazy lot haven't sorted that out yet, have you? I have, miss. Oh, yeah. I'm working with my mum. Oh, really? 
I, uh, wasn't aware there was an opening at the local whorehouse. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Amanda. It's my madcap sense of humour. Ow! How about you, Darren? Have you got a job yet? Oh, Toby? How about you, Kevin? Well, it just so happens that I need a patio laying, and I'm quite willing to employ the lot of you. It's hard work, and what with this hot spell we're having, I might get a little bit sweaty. But you can always cool yourselves off with a nice dip in my pool. That's right, pool. <laughs> so don't forget your speedos. Or rather do. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> it's a rather secluded garden. I'm uh, often out there in the all together. In fact, I'll have to remember you boys are there or I might end up giving you a free show. <laughs> I'm joking. It won't be free. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Miss, me, Hazel and Emily haven't got a job, so can we come? No. I've arranged for all the girls to be working for the week, underground, in a fully operational coal mine. <laughs> Miss, oh, oh, come on, girls. It'll be character building. It's no different from the boys. As you're building character, they'll be building muscle. <laughs> which is the same thing. <laughs> oh, boys, while I remember, um, I've got one of those tall garden patio heaters I'll need you to erect. Um, it's quite heavy, actually, but if you have any problems getting it up, I'll be more than happy to give you a hand. <laughs> what a cracking night that was. I pulled, but I feel as rough as a badger's ass. The good news is my agent just phoned. Says I'm on BBC One. Better stick it on. So home uh, at closing time. Drunken revellers throng the streets. For many of them, it's just a bit of fun. But, as you can see behind me, binge drinking can go too far. This is Woman X. Oi! Karen fucking tail, I think. The tragic effects of binge drinking are all too evident. When riled, Woman X becomes violent, abusive and delusional, claiming she is a popular entertainer. I am an entertainer, right? Oh, listen, three men walked into a pub. There was no right? That four candle. Uh, oh no. Um, just stop. I need a wee. In this inebriated state, it, is, onto your leg. it would seem that people don't realise how vulnerable they make themselves, befriending hey. anyone they come across Keep. with no concern oh. for whether or not these people may be dangerous. Oh, you! I'd smell you anywhere. No. <laughs> come here, Keith. Don't no. be like that. No. Come on. No. 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 Give us snuggy hairy back. No. No. Is this the face of binge drinking Britain? The Home Secretary comments on the matter after the rest of the day's news. I knew that wasn't Keith Allen. Didn't have Arville with him. <laughs> It's a Family Guy double bill next tonight on BBC Three. Oh, and I'm just being reminded to tell you that if you can't wait for the next episode of our new comedy, How Not to Live Your Life, you can get a sneak preview online now.